Hi, I'm Nina Crawford from OWTV at SUNY-L Westbury. We have Kevin Law, president of the Long Island Association, joining us today to discuss how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the Long Island community. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Law. Hey, very happy to be here, Nina. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, could you tell us the primary function of the Long Island Association? Sure, the uh, Long Island Association acts as a regional chamber of commerce for Nassau and Suffolk counties. Uh, we've been around for almost 95 years, and um, uh, we, our offices are in Melville, and our primary job and our role is to uh, advocate for the business community, both large and small, uh, here on Long Island. And we do a lot of our advocacy and lobbying work in our two county seats in Hopog and Mineola, as well as Albany, and sometimes in Washington, D.C. Okay. Can you describe the kind of effect that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on the Long Island economy? Our economy was doing very well before COVID. We had the lowest unemployment rate in the state. Uh, the housing market was strong. Uh, a lot of our downtowns were thriving and had become revitalized for those uh, downtowns that had issues in the past. And uh, people felt uh, optimistic. Consumers felt optimistic. And in these last two short months, everything is upside down now. We have more people unemployed today on Long Island uh, than we've had in almost uh, you know 100 years. We um, uh, our downtowns where we have a lot of our smaller shops, they've all been closed. Or almost all of them have been closed because of the uh, New York on Pause program, and uh, that has been devastating uh, because. A lot of those owners of those businesses live week to week, month to month, and uh, to lose two months worth of income is devastating. And I'm concerned that many of them won't come back. Based on the LIA monthly economic report, last month unemployment insurance claims on Long Island increased by 26,000. This is more than a 1,000% increase compared to last year. Are we headed into a deep recession in the area? Uh, this year? Unemployment is going to remain high. Um, sales tax revenues, which is an indicator of people spending money, is going to continue to remain low. And um, a lot of businesses are going to struggle to either bring back workers that they've laid off or furloughed, and um, they're going to struggle to grow. Um, but the federal government is putting a lot of money into the economy, and the hope is that towards the end of the year, uh, we will begin to recover, and that 2021 will be better. So um, short-term recession is, is a definite. We're already in one. In terms of a longer-term one, uh, we remain hopeful and optimistic that will slowly crawl out of this uh, pandemic uh, and what it's done to our economy. Based on the recent data, Long Island is a hot spot like New York City, over 3,000 deaths. Do you think that the stay at home order will remain in effect longer than May 15th? And if so, what kind of effect could this have? What the governor has established is seven healthcare metrics that each region needs to meet in order to reopen. And while Long Island meets about five of those metrics so far, there are two metrics that we haven't met. And until we meet them, we will not be given the green light to slowly reopen. And those two metrics where we have not met the state standards relate to um, new hospitalization rates, those who have the COVID and require hospitalization, and the amount of hospital deaths, and that rate needs to come down. And unfortunately, as you mentioned, Long Island has been at the epicenter of this pandemic. And so once we meet those two additional criteria, these healthcare metrics, then we'll be given the green light to slowly reopen, and that's going to be done in phases. So congratulations on being appointed to the regional control room. Um, what role does the regional control room play 
in the reopening of Long Island? Well, the governor created 10 regional control rooms. I just got off my second uh, meeting uh, virtual call um, just uh, a few minutes ago. And the Long Island Regional Control Room is made up of both county executives and myself and two other individuals, John Durso, who runs uh, the Long Island Federation of Labor, and Tracy Edwards, a former Huntington Town Councilwoman, a former Verizon executive, and now currently a, um, a Public Service Commissioner Chair, and the head of the Long Island's NAACP. Uh, she's a terrific lady and a good friend of mine. Our role, we are supposed to monitor those metrics I just re referenced before. And um, so as those metrics continue to decline, we can enter into the additional phases. At the same time, if we see the metrics begin to spike in the wrong direction, we're going to have to tighten the valve on reopenings and prevent more reopenings from occurring until we get the healthcare metrics back under control. How do you see the future of the Long Island economy and what will be the new normal for us? The new normal is uncertain at this time. Uh, what I'm confident about is that the old normal will no longer be there. Um, so what we're trying to do is help businesses comply with what the new requirements are gonna be. Every business needs to protect their employees, as well as their customers and the public to the extent they have public coming into their place of business. And so steps, standards, procedures, guidelines, and best practices will all have to be utilized by businesses to make sure the confidence of their employees is generated so they're not afraid to come to work and that the public has confidence in going into that place of business whether to buy something or to use something. And so I think the focus now is on increasing the confidence of our residents so they want to go back and feel safe about going back to work and that people will begin to feel safe about going to a place of business. I want to thank you again, Mr. Law, for joining us today. And thank you to the viewers at home for watching. Be safe and healthy. I'm Nina Crawford, and this is OWTV.